Hi everybody, welcome to Mojave Model Railroad. This is Tina Marie Cowett. I am live from Las Vegas, Nevada, and it is hot here, 118 degrees in Vegas. We have another wicked weathering tutorial for you here. We have a nice little BLMA reefer. These are very hard to come by, so if you get a chance to get them, they are really, really cool, especially if you do the modern railroad. Gives a great opportunity for some graffiti, and I did some hand-painted graffiti on this, as well as some decals, and some little tips you might pick up from uh, this cute little video. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, we'll see you in a little bit. If you're interested in how I weather the Scale Trains CSX GEES 44A H Gevo that's flying by, I'll put a link up in the right hand corner if you want to go check out that video. At some point I'm going to create a Photoshop tutorial on how I created these stencils. You can print them out and there are machines that will cut them for you. I cut them by hand for this particular one. Now you're going to have three different versions of it. One is the colored version, one is the black and white. We're going to cut out the colored letters leaving the black and the black and white one we're going to completely cut all the way around. That'll eventually be our black background and then we'll have our color overlay. At some point, I'll do a complete tutorial on how I weather my trucks and couplers. The, the video is gonna be way too long if I included it, so I chose to cut it out, but I moved the couplers as well as the wheel axles. I wanna weather them separately, and because of that, we don't want to get any external paint on it through the entire process in the airbrush. I do this before I go in and do a clear coat across the entire model. The clear coat really helps balance it out, make sure there's no fingerprints, and gives it a nice coat for the airbrushing as well as for any of the chalks that I'll be using to this process to adhere to. Now the trucks you see in this model are not the actual trucks for this model. I put an old pair of trucks on just so it's easier to sit and don't damage any of the finer parts on the bottom of the model while in the airbrush booth. At this point in the model I've already added my standard kind of grime base coat for the underside of the model as well as kind of on the side which is just kind of a dark earth and black. Here I'm putting the background stencil on and masking off the rest of the car. This is just kind of the start of the finished project. When airbrushing, you're working in layers to slowly build up the final product. So if you want crisper lines, you can do what I do here, which is add a little tacket to the back of the stencil and spot so it sits tight around the model. If you do this over an area that is already airbrushed, you might want to clear coat it first so you don't pull any paint up when you pull up the stencil. Now I'm using a very fine 0.2 millimeter needle for this with my PSI set around 23. This allows me to get a little closer for even finer details. I'm using the Vallejo Lemon Yellow as well as on the top just standard white. Now the idea is you're putting down very light layers and slowly building them up instead of one big heavy coat. One big heavy coat you could end up with streaks which can be used to your advantage down the line but for here for the base I don't want any streaks so you're just going to slowly layer up the yellow as well as the white. So why white on a white model? Well, I'm trying to cover up any lettering and have a uniform base for the other colors that we're gonna be layering. You wanna definitely make sure that when you're airbrushing, especially for this flat base coat, you kind of move the box car around, spin it around and get from all kinds of different angles just to make sure you get full coverage for the base coat. Give it a minute to dry and once you pull up the stencil, you'll have a base for the area you're gonna be working with for the lettering. Now again, this isn't supposed to look fantastic. This is supposed to just give us a base so we get a good idea of where we want to position our graffiti. We'll come back in later on and we're gonna highlight and touch up this background. Okay, now I'm working on the black 3D background for the lettering by taking the wanted black and white stencils I completely cut out earlier. Again, I added a little tacket to the back of this stencil before applying it to the model. I didn't clear coat the layer below as if the paint peels up, I can go back over it later anyways. The black is Vallejo's Glossy Black 70.861. Again, as with the other colors, I'm slowly covering the entire area of the stencil, making sure to attack it from every angle. It seems weird to put a base coat down that is going to be mostly covered up by the black, but you'll understand why as it helps keep the graffiti centered, but it also helps to define where my background will be and how much room I have to work with moving forward as we start to layer. 
Now, although I am trying to shoot this black into all the different crevices and from different angles, I do make sure that when I'm going around the edges of this stencil, that I kind of keep the airbrush pointed directly above. So to make those edges very defined, and we're going to go back and touch those up anyways later on. But for this purpose, I want to keep it as defined as possible. Give the paint a minute to dry and slowly and carefully remove the stencil. Now we have our basic background thickness for our lettering. This is where you'll really start to see the project come together. I've switched over to the color stencil we cut out earlier. Notice you can still see the black extrusion of letters still on the stencil. I'm aligning the stencil on the black, making sure the contours of the outline letters match the location to the stencil. Again, I added a little tacket, but forget the clear coat, which is okay as I'm going to go back to touch up and define the black extrusions later. I'm using Vallejo's Purple 70.959 as the base coat for the letters. Again, shooting it from different angles to get good coverage, but making sure not to shoot from too much of an angle and getting this paint to leak under the stencils, thus ruining the defined edges we're trying to create for these letters. Now I wanted to add a little depth to the purple and not have it seem so flat, so going back over the purple with a little Vallejo white, I'm just trying to focus on the bottom of the lettering and not to go over the center line of the letters. Now I don't want a heavy coat, I'm just looking for a subtle layering. I want the purple to still be able to be seen. Okay, so you're going to notice the model isn't masked off, and the reason for that is I'm still using the 0.2 millimeter needle on my airbrush, and the PSI is still set around 20. So because of this, it gives me a lot more control. I can get a lot closer, which limits the overspray, so I'm not affecting the rest of the model. Now this is the moment where things start to really come together as you carefully remove the stencil again. I didn't clear coat before this step, so you'll notice a bit of the black peeled up, so it's okay because I'm going to go back and define these edges in the next step anyways. Okay, so this is where the fun part is. It requires a steady hand, but I'm going back with the black and I'm going to highlight the outside of the lettering as well as the inside of some of the lettering and including even some of the black that peeled up from the stencil. Now I'm still using this 0.2 millimeter needle, but drop the air pressure down to 18 so I can get really, really close. Now the problem is using a lower PSI means that the paint tends to want to dry on the tip of the airbrush so periodically you have to clean that tip otherwise you will end up with some not happy overspray which again can, can be fixed but uh, you want to try to avoid it if all possible. Unfortunately, the camera never recorded the next few steps, but I went back around the entire letters with the lemon yellow. To do this, I took the original background stencil piece we cut out and placed it over the letters, kind of creating a mask. This allowed me to go over with some light black brush strokes to frame the word. I did a light coat of Krylon Clear Flat or Dull Coat. And once dried, I drew in using a fine black paint pen all the branches that extended from the letters as well as added a few smaller tag items with the same paint pens. One more quick clear flat coat and it was off to the dark wash. Now for this I used a Vallejo dark gray model wash mixed with a little water and isopropyl alcohol. I used a wide soft brush and just kind of dragged from the top down being careful doing this as you don't want your brush to pick up too much of the paint at the bottom of your mix. Now if you find you have too much wash or too much 
paint on your brush, always have a paper towel handy. You can kind of blot off the brush and then go back over the model and the softer, thicker brush will actually absorb some of this model wash and kind of leave it a much softer toned wash than you originally had put on. And it's also good to go over it, especially in the bottom parts of the model where the doors are, where it might have accumulated, and kind of soak up that excess as well. I want just enough of the wash to tone down the fresh white of the car, but I don't want it too dark to look like it was painted on. Now I give both sides, top and ends, an even coat, making sure to soak up the areas at the bottom that pool up too much. I wanted parts of the door to have a little rust and you can get more defined areas using oil but this I wanted to try something a bit different so I combined the Monroe models weathering powders light rust 3106 and dark rust 3105 in a small cup and using a harder brush stippled areas I wanted to rust to be focusing kind of on the corners as well as the seams. Once I was happy with the look, I took a different, softer brush, lightly coated with 50-50 mix of water and isopropyl alcohol that I dabbed on a paper towel first before dragging it across the model from the top down. This creates a streaking feel, but it's very subtle compared to using oils. I did the same rusting weathering effect on the doors on this side of the car. Now you'll notice the graffiti on this side is all decals except for a few small hand painted tags. I didn't show this process as the video was already getting long. I have another one of these BLM reefers I'll be weathering with nothing but decals and I'll show my process of making them appear seamlessly painted on in another upcoming video. So make sure to click the bell notification for future updates. When weathering rolling stock, one of the things I see most modelers miss is the kick-up spray that can happen from the wheels on the ends of these cars. Now, not all are as defined as I have here, so check when possible with prototypical pictures. I normally airbrush this on, but you can go back with an array of powders and, and layer it later. Here, I'm adding a bit more of the Monroe Grimy Black Powder 3102. Uh, plus there's an etched walkway area that is normally white in prototypical photos so I'm adding a bit of chalky white Monroe weathering powder 3101. Now, I could have airbrushed this earlier and then come back and weathered over it but instead I decided to use this chalky white Monroe weathering powder to kind of create the same effect. I've also gone back with a bit of yellow Vallejo paint to touch up the coupler lift bar, I mixed it with a little thinner as I didn't want a heavy coat of paint. Again, using prototypical pictures of these reefers, I went back with a fine brush and used a combination of Vallejo Light Rust 301 and the Model Air Rust 71.080 to kind of add some finer details of rust on the ends of these cars. Now, I mixed the paints with a little water and isopropyl alcohol to a really liquid mix. I really wanted it to run down. I then go back with a new brush dipped in only isopropyl alcohol, dab it on a paper towel to remove the excess, and then go over the paint to kind of tone it down, to remove some of the paint, to kind of get the look and feel that I'm looking for. Now, these are modern reefers, so we need to go back and add the safety stripings that are required in all trains today. Now, this particular model already had them on, but of course the weathering covered them up. 
Now you can go by prototypical photos of where they should be on your particular model. I just happened to copy the location from another one of the BLMA models I had on hand here. Now you have many choices for this. You could mask off and paint by hand or airbrush or go back and add decals like micro scales or do what I did here and use the highway and byway reflective striping. Now these tend to be a bit thicker and more of a gold, not necessarily a yellow color, which isn't as prototypical, but once weathered, you won't be able to tell the difference. And they do come pre-cut, pretty easy to install. And it saves you from having to go through the process of applying decals, which could ruin some of your weathering. One final coat of Krylon Clear Coat Flat and we are done with this project. I will say even though this was a time consuming process, I got to try out some new ideas and techniques as well as share with you some ways you can create cool graffiti even if you don't think of yourself as a talented artist. I mean, I can't even draw a stick figure without messing it up. So if I can create this level of realism for my layout, so can you. Remember, inspired realism, it starts here. Now let's go take a look and see how this reefer looks on my layout, rolling by from both sides. Not too bad at all. All in all, pretty happy with this model and glad I got a chance to share part of this process with all of you. Well everybody, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. I think the car came out pretty good. It's very rare that I get to do a projects for myself. I have a lot of client projects I need to try to get done. And it's very hot out here in the studio. So I'm limited to the time that I can get projects done for myself. This is a great little project. Um, I do have some more little tips on airbrushing as well as using stencils uh, that I'll be using on other projects moving forward. So please stick around. Make sure you turn around and like my channel. Hit the little bell notification notification as well as subscribing that way you get notifications when I do have new projects or new videos that do hit you can also go over to MojaveModelRailroad.com that's MojaveModelRailroad.com you can follow me there you can get pick up some really cool gear like this t-shirt that I'm wearing as well so if you'd like to see some different content on the channel please leave me a message let me know send me an email um, I'd love to be able to get in touch with you worldwide and see what I can do for you in the meantime guys I'm leaving here because it's so hot in the studio right now. So enjoy. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye.